Hey, Fabio. Hey, Brandon. How's your holiday? It's going well, but I'm having some issues reading some EEGs. I found that the terminology we learned with Dr. Hirsch was really handy over the holidays. My mother-in-law was visiting, and cool. we had a lot to say about ICU EEG. So nice. you're having trouble still? Do you think we should bring Dr. Hirsch back? Yeah, I think he forgot to talk about seizures. It's New Year's Day. Do you think he'll come on New Year's? Yeah, it's a hard sell, eh? Maybe if we wear these hats, we can lure him back. Do you think he'll like him? Yeah, maybe he'll like him. Then maybe he'll come. Interesting uh, headwear you have. What's going on with the hats? Well, we, we had originally invited you for a Christmas special, but you said you celebrate Hanukkah, so we thought we'd get these hats. Ah, very nice. Not Shockingly, I don't have any Hanukkah hats. Oh, what? Oh. <laughs> Isn't this what you wear at, at the parties? And <laughs> Yeah, all the time. All right, well, what, where do seizures fall in all this alphabet soup we've been talking about? A good question. So let's talk about seizures. Yeah! The ACNS definition of seizure was largely based on what's become known as the Salzburg criteria. So this is the definition. So it's epileptiform discharges that average more than two and a half hertz for at least 10 seconds. And the best way of that is not to look at one second at a time, but just to count how many discharges occur in 10 seconds. So if there's more than 25 of them, then your average is more than 2.5 hertz. <laughs> or the more traditional, any pattern that has definite evolution and lasts at least 10 seconds. And then the corollary is what's, what's status epilepticus. So electrographic status is any seizure that continues for uh, 10 or more continuous minutes or for more than 20% of any hour. This is just a diagram mm -hmm. showing the, an example of what barely makes it to a seizure because there are 26 sharp waves in this 10 second period. So that would be the minimum you need to qualify as an electrographic seizure. Mm -hmm. um, so this is a, a graph from that paper, the pain et al from uh, sick kids in Toronto. This was the one that showed that 20% cutoff. Mm. Um, so what's shown in, in this, bar graph is on the x-axis is the maximum hourly seizure burden. Mm -hmm. And on the y-axis is the percent of subjects that had a significant neurological decline. And you can see that once you get over 20% maximum hourly seizure burden, that jumps way up. And now the, uh, so that was electrographic seizures and electrographic status. The other category is electroclinical seizure. So this is any, any EEG pattern, any of them. It doesn't have to be a rhythmic or periodic pattern, and it doesn't have to qualify as a seizure. But any EEG pattern that has a definite clinical correlate that's time-locked to the pattern. So the clinical feature is there when the pattern's there, and the clinical feature is not there when the pattern's not there. Uh, and that can be any duration. So that could be a three seconds that counts as a seizure if there's a definite time-locked clinical correlate. And it can be subtle. It could be just twitching of you know, a finger or two, something like that. As long as, again, you know it's time-locked to the pattern, that's because of the clinical correlate that becomes a clinical seizure. Um, so that's one way is to have a, a definite clinical correlate. The other way to have electroclinical seizure is to have both EEG and clinical improvement when you give an IV anti-seizure medication. I, actually, I, I remember a, a case where um, we had a patient with what were called triphasic waves at the time. And we gave some Ativan and the patient seemed like they were resurrected from the dead. They, they went from being attended to speaking in complete sentences. But yeah. So yeah, again, you have to have both though. So if you give a drug and uh, like if you give a benzo and the EEG pattern goes away, but the patient doesn't improve at all, right. you, really, you really haven't learned anything. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that happens a lot. Someone just falls asleep and that, it, but the EEG looks, you know, better. Right. That's not uh Right, doesn't right, make exactly. it an electroclinical seizure. Exactly. I will make the point where if you are going to give sedating meds like, like benzos, give very small doses and just enough to get rid of the pattern. And then you do the exams. So you, got, you got to do serial exams before yeah. you give the drug and keep doing the same exam. Yeah. But if you give four milligrams of lorazepam to one of these patients, they're just, you're going to just put them asleep. Even if it was status, you won't be able to prove it because they're just going to be deeply asleep. Words of wisdom. No, yeah, the EEG pattern does not have to qualify as an electrographic seizure. So you can have uh, you know, 0.5 hertz periodic discharges, but if they're time-locked to aphasia or any other clinical 
feature and you treat it and the patient gets better, that's an electroclinical seizure, even though the EEG pattern was not an electrographic seizure. Um, and then status, same definition, at least 10 continuous minutes or more than 20% of any hour or longer. Caveat about convulsive status, you only need five minutes. So this is the a, a diagram of the ictal interictal continuum. So this shows really going from interictal to ictal as you go from left to right. So you see GERDA, generalized rhythmic delta, it's not even interactive, right? It has nothing to do with seizure. So it's it's off the whole thing. It's a sad farewell. It's, it's like Pluto, it's no longer a planet. So GERDA is the Pluto of the rhythmic and periodic patterns. <laughs> so, okay, Pluto's off the scale. For interictal, so you, yeah, you have your regular sporadic sharp waves and spikes, and then you get into all your rhythmic and periodic patterns. So that's listed here. And you see, as they get faster and faster, they're more likely to be ictal. Once you're greater than 2.5 hertz, you're by definition, you made it to ictal. Mm -hmm. And then again, within the potentially ictal, so this, everything in this yellow box is part of the ictal and ictal continuum. Mm -hmm. So as you go from no plus to plus, you're getting closer to ictal. As you go from static to fluctuating, you're closer. Of course, if you reach evolving, you're in the ictal as long as, long as it's 10 seconds. And when, when we say m more likely to be ictal or, or, you know, something is ictal in this context, what, what do we really mean? Because I, normally in epilepsy would mean uh, something, you know, perhaps say there's a sudden behavioral change that happens, but that's not always the case here. Do, do we mean something like more likely to cause harm or yeah, that's a good point. So um, more likely to be either contributing to their clinical deficit, including just impaired alertness, you know, or stupor yeah. or coma, or it's more likely to be causing neuronal injury. Okay. So it doesn't have to, it, as long as it's making them worse off clinically, even if it doesn't damage tissue, or if we don't know whether it does or not, we call it ictal. Yes, that's correct. I often think of this as as meaning you know, that someone would benefit potentially from anti seizure medicine, which I guess that's maybe a corollary of the other. Yeah, the other I, I think you're exactly right. Those are the two ways to benefit. One is you can improve them clinically at that moment by stopping the activity, or you're preventing secondary neuronal injury. So those are kind of the two ways treatment can help, and those are the the two reasons we talk about things being ictal. Yeah, you, we can't rely on clinical Carla, unfortunately, because these people are too impaired. Yeah. Um, and then you see here the stimulus-induced and triphasic. Notice there's no arrows, and they're not in any particular place on this continuum, because we don't know if they really mean anything. Sometimes triphasic morphology is part of a definite seizure. Sometimes it, it's way on the other end. And stimulus-induced, we really don't know if, if that makes you more or less likely to be ictal. If it's a stimulus-induced clinical seizure, it's obviously ictal. If it's stimulus-induced GERDA, it's not ictal at all. So that, mm -hmm. that really doesn't help in itself. Mm -hmm. um, and then birds, again, they kind of run the gamut within here, but the definite bird should be much farther to the right. If you got a nine-second evolving pattern, that's about as close to a seizure as you can get, because if it's one second longer, it is a seizure. This is a great diagram. Yeah, I think we made about 74 versions of it before <laughs> calling it as good as we were going to get. All right. So what is the formal definition of the ictal interictal continuum? So this is it. It, it. it basically means possible electrographic seizure, as we were talking about, or possible status. So it's any periodic discharge or spike wave pattern that is between 1 and 2.5 hertz over 10 seconds. Again, you do it by just counting how many discharges in 10 seconds. Mm -hmm. yeah, so that's one way between one and two and a half hertz. That's the majority of IIC patterns. The other way is for it to be a little slower. So just between 0.5 and one hertz. But in that case, it has to also have a plus modifier or fluctuation. Mm -hmm. So those are some of the modifiers that make it more likely to be ictal. Mm -hmm. Okay. And then there's one other way is to be a lateralized rhythmic delta activity pattern. That's at least one hertz and has a plus modifier or fluctuation. And this includes any lateralized RDA. So this is kind of a list of all the different ways you can have just one side or both independent or two on one side or multifocal. But GERDA does not count. Generalized rhythmic delta does not, is not part of the IEC at all. Okay, and the other point is it cannot qualify as definite seizure activity. If it's seizure, then it's a seizure. It's not IEC. 
So IAC is for the things that are not definite seizures. Where, where do birds come in? Um, so birds are their own thing. They're not on the uh, IAC. They're, like they're in that almost seizure category, but they're not yeah. part of the IAC. IAC is really for lo longer lasting patterns. I notice even with myself that people tend to call any of these patterns in the continuum, regardless of the, um, um, the duration. So it's, I think it's a good teaching point. Uh, even if they look scary, if they have pluses, if they're really bad looking, but they're less than 10 seconds they're automatically out of the continuum, right? Right. Okay. I, that was perfectly reasonable because there was no definition or no accepted okay. consensus definition of IAC until this terminology came out. Gotcha. So prior ones, yeah, sometimes just any rhythmic or periodic pattern was considered on the IAC. So yeah, the IAC is kind of broad and the things, again, more towards the ictal end will be more likely to suggest either treating or at least a diagnostic trial of treatment. So let's say you have LPDs that last nine seconds and they're like 3.5 hertz. So they're not bursts because they don't reach the four hertz, but they're not 10 seconds either. You just call them LPDs. Right. Okay. Oh, I don't know if I've ever seen, let's see, three and a half hertz. No, 3.5, right? Doesn't make it to your birds, which has to be four. Yeah. So yeah, that's a good point. You can't call it a bird. So that's one of the uh, rare times where a pattern will be faster than three hertz without calling it a seizure. It has to be less than 10 seconds to do that. Interesting. Okay, so here's a pattern. Uh, it's another one. It's kind of a combination of periodic discharges. Mm -hmm. and, and rhythmic delta, not super regular, but there's certainly something going on in there, something mm -hmm. rhythmic as well. And it's uh, a little less than two hertz. So kind of one, here it's pretty much 1.5. Mm -hmm. So this is a nice example of the ictal and rectal continuum in one hemisphere on the right side. So this is mm -hmm. LPD plus R at 1.5 to two hertz. That's on the IIC. Lasting more than 10 seconds, right? Right. This is a generalized example, very similar to the prior one, but now it's everywhere. Mm -hmm. so again, kind of 1.5 hertz ish, maybe slightly faster. Plus rhythmic. A little, a little, a little higher amplitude, and you might be uh, more interested in treating this one and thinking it might be causing clinical impairment. Yeah. Uh, but mm -hmm. it's still IIC and still not fast enough to call it definite electrographic seizure. Uh, well, we kind of covered this already, but if you have a pattern that's on the IIC and you give your uh, IV anti-seizure medication and the EEG improves, but the patient does not, and you really haven't learned anything, and we call that possible electroclinical status. Um, and that's basically what it's also known as possible non-convulsive status. Hmm. So going back to the last example, if we gave Ativan, there's EEG improvement, no clinical improvement, we'll call it possible electroclinical status? Yeah, it's pretty much the same thing you were going to call it before you did your trial. It's pretty much still saying it's on the IIC. You don't know if it's, mm -hmm. cause it, you don't know if it's causing any clinical correlate or not. Mm -hmm.